sheet because I do teach recipe classes from time to time in other places. We started with the back and have and just bring it forward. Okay. So, um, how many people were at my talk yesterday? Okay. And how many of you are familiar with raw living foods or don't know that much about it? Uh, who, who doesn't know much about raw living foods? Okay. Let me do a quick overview. First of all, my, hi, thank you, Austin. Good to go. Thank you. My name is Deborah Secunda, and um, I'm a broadcast journalist and a video and DVD producer that discovered raw living foods right here at New Life Expo when I interviewed Victoris Kalvinskis and it made absolute scientific sense. So I decided to learn all about it and learn some good recipes because I realized if it doesn't taste good, I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> so that was trick number one is to learn how to feed myself. And then um, thanks to my wonderful uh, boyfriend, he would taste all my mistakes and so then I got really good at it and people were telling me, wow, that's delicious. So in addition to all the DVDs that we produced for all the raw food gurus that you may have heard of, Victoris Kolvinskis, Gabriel Cousins, um, I went ahead and I made a recipe DVD myself. So um, anyway, these are $30 on Amazon and there are 15 in the back, mine's only 10. You might want them as a nice introduction to raw because they all have recipes and they show you exactly how to make delicious food and how to sprout your own superfoods. Very important. Superfoods don't really come as pills in a bottle. They can, they say they can, but they will be lacking the life force. So you want to be sprouting your superfoods. These are little chickpeas, garbanzo beans that I started on Thursday. Very simple procedure. And we are going to be eating them now. They're ready, see the little tails. I'll just take a quick little walk around so you can check them out. See the little, ba the little babies. And um, these are brimming with life force. And they're going to become raw living food hummus with all of the enzymes intact. Now, what is an enzyme? Why do we eat raw living foods? An enzyme is a macromolecule, a chemical catalyst for virtually every metabolic function that you have in your body. Everything from breathing to your yoga asanas to detoxifying anything in your bloodstream that possibly shouldn't be there, the cells res respiration, exchange of nutrients, we need our enzymes. Now the body does make some of its own enzymes. Basically you get your enzymes from raw living foods. You have to use up your body's own enzymes to digest cooked foods. So then you're kind of running on empty. But if you are taking enzymes in your raw living foods, then you have extras so they can run around and heal something and detoxify and just give you that nice healthy glow. So good to know. Um, that's one of the most important things about raw living foods. Also, chlorophyll. You want to make sure you're eating your dark leafy greens every day. That's where you get your calcium, vitamin K for kale, spinach. Yesterday I made Dr. Ann Wigmore's energy soup. I call them green blender meals. I kick them up with some garlic and cayenne and make them really tasty. You want to make sure you're getting your probiotics on a daily basis. Living probiotics. We can make our own sauerkrauts. We can make our own yogurts and cheeses out of nuts and seeds. So uh, all of those recipes are on the DVD as well. When you're eating a live culture, you know that you're really getting these raw, uh, living, friendly floras in with that culture, and that is the best digestive aid possible. So you want to be doing that. That's another very important part of raw living foods. Um, detoxification. You can use green blender meals in addition to juicing or just a 100% raw living foods diet to detoxify yourself perhaps uh, an 80% raw, 20% cooked diet, which is what we recommend, especially during winter when it's cold outside, you will not be detoxifying as much as when you're 100% raw. 
but winter's coming and that's perfectly fine. You have to find your own balance and start wherever you are is fine and just start incorporating more raw living food on a daily basis. If you want to start there, that's perfectly fine. Just learn a couple of the recipes. For example, today I'm making the dressings. You have the handout now. So if you're going to make some tahini, which is really easy to make, then you have your own wonderful dressing for spinach or spring mix, lettuce, red leaf lettuce, whatever you want to put it on. And it's a good place to start. So in addition to your green blender meals, uh, if you go to my website, there's a lot of recipes there. And today I'm going to be sharing a few extra winter kitchen tips. So let's uh, get this ready. And what I'm going to do now is run for 30 seconds and wash my hands before I start cooking, uncooking. <laughs> and while I'm doing that, you can, uh, if you want to take a little walk back and see Ellen in the back and take a look at some DVDs and some kale chips, I also wanted to put out some samples of, of some kale chips here. So what I did was I took sesame seeds that you can buy at the health food store. Make sure you refrigerate them because you don't want any of the precious oils to become rancid. They will start oxidizing. One of the things I don't understand is why the stores don't have nuts and seeds in the refrigerated section, <laughs> but, but they don't. So as soon as you get home, put them in the freezer or the refrigerator. I soak my sesame seeds for uh, between two and four hours, and this softens them up. It gets rid of the enzyme inhibitors. Then I rinse them very well in purified water. And then I throw them in the blender with uh, some lemon, some garlic. You see the recipe is right here for basic tahini. And a little bit of ginger, some Celtic salt. And um, so then you come out with this. So this is ready. And next I'm going to start with a cucumber, uh, sorry, red pepper and celery dressing. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, red pepper and celery dressing. So here we have celery, red pepper, and some lemons. So I'm going to put some lemon in the bottom of the blender, some red pepper. Yum, yum, yum. This really sweetens this up. Is it the sesame seeds you put in the freezer or the refrigerator? Um, I had these in the refrigerator because I just bought them and I took them home. Either one. If you're going to store them for a long time, keep them in the freezer. I just put a lemon in and I'm putting some red pepper chunks in there. This is going to be really sweet and delicious. Now, I advocate a low glycemic program. Americans are addicted to sugar and we really should not be. So everything on my DVD is geared towards low glycemic. We are, most of us are walking around with candida or even cancer comes in and out of the body as um, you know, your immune system will fight it off, but you're constantly being bombarded with all kinds of um, uh, you know, stress agents, viruses, fungus, mold. Sugar loves fungus, mold, candida, and cancer. So we try not to have sugar in our diet. A little bit of red pepper uh, along with um, this particular recipe. I mean, it does sweeten it up a little, but not too much. So next I'm putting in some celery. All of this going in. Um, I don't put celery in the bottom of the blender because it will wrap around the, the, the blades. I'm going to throw a little bit of garlic in there. Who doesn't, who doesn't like garlic here? <laughs> Good, not one hand went up. <laughs> so we're all going to enjoy this together. And we can all breathe on each other afterwards. And then we'll go to the raw food panel and be sitting next to everybody else and be breathing on them, but whatever. <laughs> okay, some, some beautiful sprouted chickpeas are going on in here. How long did you sprout this? I started these Thursday. Thursday night I soaked. And so here they are. They're ready to go. Now, do you all know how to sprout? No. 
Okay, that, it's also on the DVD. It explains A to Z, all different sprouting methods, including jar method. Or you can run downstairs to Steve Sproutman and buy one of these. Or just use a simple colander. Okay, so I took my garbanzo chickpeas and I soaked them overnight, just like this, in some purified water, boom. In the morning, I poured off the soaking water because this will have your enzyme inhibitors in it. And we don't want to be eating that. We have now activated the germination process here. So the proteins have broken down into amino acids, the carbohydrates have become simple sugars, and the fats are now essential fatty acids. So the digestion process has already been started for you. Okay, next, they've soaked overnight, you've rinsed them. Rinse them again, you know, just water, rinse, and then you're gonna hang it so it can drain. When they feel dry, or when you get home from work, the same thing, purified water, leave them there for about 20, 30 seconds, you'll actually hear them absorbing the liquid. I like to say, oh, they're alive, they're waking up, they're drinking. And then pour off that water, rinse them just a little bit again, hang it up, and, and this is what you get. You just do a couple times a day of a little bit of a, a rinse and hang. Boom, done. Yeah, two or three times a day. If it's very dry in your apartment, you might want to, during the winter dry heat, you might have to do it three times a day. Otherwise, twice a day, they're perfectly fine. And guess what? They sprout themselves. I always have mung beans, garbanzo beans, lentil sprouts, all of this going all the time. Or, interestingly enough, you can always go to the store and get some sprouts. They have them everywhere now. So this is really raw living foods and should be eaten on a daily basis. Okay, I'm going to put some spices in here.